This is the Sony Signal Interface Switcher PC-1271. It is considered by Sony to be a projector accessory. It can connect to a number of different projectors, whether it is a CRT projector or a projector using a different type of display technology. It also can be connected to a number of Sony's rear projection monitors, including this big 60-incher and this smaller 40-inch model. You may have experience running out of inputs on your television. You've plugged all your consoles in and yet there's no more inputs left to plug the remainder of your consoles into the TV. You need something extra. You need, say, for example, this SCART box here with all of its connections to accommodate all of your consoles. That, in essence, is what this device is. It enables more devices, more, whether it be DVD players, Blu-ray consoles, video players, computers, whatever it is, you can hook all of those into the switcher and then hook that to your projector to view them all by switching through on the front panel. On the side of the machine, we can see the labels. Made in 1993 of June, model number AC120 volts. This is an import unit. I've got another video showing you how to change the voltage to accept 220 to 240 or thereabouts. The back obviously is going to be of great interest these devices enable you to put in eight cards, have eight devices connected in. It's not completely full at the moment. There are three blank slots there on the end. It doesn't actually come with any of these cards by default. These last two cards, or they're not actually cards, but these two parts here are permanent. They come with the unit. All of these are additional accessories. Here's a blanking plate, a bit of sticky tape residue on the back, no surprises there. Moving back around to the front, there's the on button, the standby off button. They will illuminate when power is given. Here is the infrared receiver. Speaking of infrared, this is the matching remote, the Sony RM-1270S. Looking more closely, there are buttons labelled 1 to 8. You can choose from any of those inputs. And some basics up top. Two double A's will power the remote. On the front, we also have the eight buttons to select which input you want to display. Here we can see that some of those buttons have been labeled from the previous owner. That being the US government. These two pieces here are rack mounting ears that go onto the side of the unit. They screw in and then the unit can be mounted into a rack. On top of the unit, we have a sticker here. I have no idea on this sticker's history and what the history of the unit is, but I see a price of $5,176, and that would be in US dollars. If that's how much this unit costs, that's unbelievable because it's not really that complex or sophisticated. Going back to the back, the on-off switch the mains power that goes in there through that IEC connector. There's a 25 pin DB connector there that can enable remote control from say a PC for example. These connectors here, I think they're 14 pins. These are quite interesting. You can connect a cable into this one in the out to go to your projector or rear projection monitor to transfer all signals, to transfer any of the selected signals to go out Speaking of the cable, this one here, the CCQ-2BRS, the 2 stands for 2 metres. You could get a 50 metre version and there's some other versions that are in between those two lengths. Sony camera cable. This is a NOS cable. There are your ends. Let's plug it in for fun. There's no, no way to plug that in wrong. Pretty robust, these big things. Like that. Oh, look at that. How easy you'd think that's not even in properly. Right, so that would go like that. Then our other end, this one here, would be connected into our old friend, the Sony RVP-6010QM. To do that, we would travel down to the bottom front of the big unit here, 
go to the left side and you can see now at about center or right of center that big round socket that's where we plug this cable in to transfer all picture and sound to the monitor the purpose of the input side is that you can actually connect two of these units two PC-1271s together you run a cable out of the out on the other unit into the in here on this one and then you run another cable out from here to your projector that gives you a total of 16 devices all connected together to your projector when you do have two switches hooked up as just described you press the second button on there to go to the second switcher and choose which input you want as the display. This remote mode knob here, I'm not certain on its purpose, but I think it's actually a cable signal strength booster. The cable lengths on, on this allow up to 50 meters. And that boosts the strength because as your signal travels further and further, it deteriorates. Therefore, it needs compensation. And I think you can manually adjust the signal strength, but I may be wrong on that. Here's our monitor outside. You can actually ignore these big 14-pin connectors and just use this here if you want. You could hook this up to a regular monitor. You could hook this up to any regular display as long as you can get the correct cabling to do it and the signals are compatible with your particular monitor or TV. But it has RGB out as well as the sinks, vertical and horizontal and composite sync, composite video, S-video out, audio out, and there's a, another method of control there with a headphone style jack. As far as the input cards are concerned, there is quite a range from Sony. I don't know the full breadth and width of what Sony has made over the years. Here we've got three S-Video cards, both accepting in and out S-Video, composite video in and out, and audio in. There's three of those cards. They're quite common, perhaps the most common card of all. We also have the RGB card, which will be of great value to us. That takes in RGB as well as vertical and horizontal sync and composite sync. So you would use your consoles in RGB as well as VGA signals. I don't think this one accepts component video, however. On the end, on the end here is a 9-pin VGA card, I believe. I haven't used this one successfully yet, so I can't really comment on too much. As for other cards that are available, these are on screen. This lot here is out of a brochure from Sony. This one here looks like a component card with no audio option. This one looks similar with extras such as audio and those other couple of things. This card here could be a useful option for any devices that have a interface board slot but don't carry the big connectors like this. There are still many more cards from Sony I'm yet to see a SCART based one, I'm guessing there isn't, but it would be great if someone created one within the community, like we have for other monitors that have been done in recent years. Speaking of aftermarket cards, this is a very interesting specimen here. I know it is the Sony IFB Dash Full HD, yet it's labelled IFB Dash 3D. This is an aftermarket card, it is not made by Sony. It has HDMI inputs and is a bit of a miracle, quite frankly, as to what you can do with this card. While we're on this card, to take out a card, you need to undo the screws at the top and the bottom. There's one done. The screw will stay loosely in the plate. And we'll do the other one. Come on. It's just about done. Then we can pull it out. Oh, I might have to go a little bit more with that bottom screw off here. It should be enough, like so. That'll slide out. There's the contents of the card. The ID IFB1000 for the S-Video card. Then we can put the HDMI card in. There's a groove on the top and the bottom that you need to follow. 
Otherwise, you'll be in deep trouble. Oh, come on. Like that. That'll push in like that. I'll have to use the screws from this card to firm it in, to screw it in and secure it. But that's all there is to that. Looking at the connector end of the cards. Come on, camera. Focus in. There's a big array of pins in there. Plenty of pins to carry whatever is necessary. Whatever signals, pictures, sound and communication, whatever protocol. Just before I turn on the switcher to demonstrate it, this is the preceding model, the PC-1270. It appears to be very similar, similar on the front and similar around the back here. Not too many differences. A little bit less common in the marketplace. I think the 1271 is the most common of the switches. The successor is the PC-3000. This one has had more substantial changes. It has an LCD on the front, it has buttons for more functionality and guiding through the LCD panel. Around the back there are also some changes. The big round sockets are gone. Instead in their place are RS-232 connectors, enabling this device to be connected to various other devices, including more PC-3000s, another seven in fact, to bring up the total amount of expansion ports to 57. However, despite being the newest of the units, it seems to be the rarest. For the first test, I'm going to use these three consoles in front of us. A PAL PS2, an NTSC Sega Saturn, and a PAL Super Nintendo. And I'll run all of these consoles in S-Video into the switcher and then the switcher to a monitor. It's up and running. PlayStation 2 is visible now. As I said, these are in S-Video. It's in port one, that's illuminated pink. Number two, Sega Saturn. This game's in high resolution, Astra Superstars. Number three, Bubsy on the Super Nintendo in PAL. With the remote, we'll go back to the PlayStation 2. Sega Saturn, and the Super Nintendo, finally. Easy as that. This video is pretty easy. Only one cable for the video. Now I'll do some RGB. The Super Nintendo is still plugged in for this final demonstration, still in S video. However, the Saturn is in RGB this time. I'll switch the monitor to RGB and internal sync and then I'll switch the switcher over. And we're in RGB with the satin. The cabling requirements for RGB are far more extensive than S-Video and the nightmare of cables at the back is like a bird's nest. To sum up, you're probably better off just get a SCART switcher, much smaller footprint. You probably already got SCART cables. There's no need to go converting everything into BNC. However, where the switcher might be ideal is where it's intended to be used with projectors, rear projection units, a direct hookup with the camera cable, a combination of cards, HDMI card. If you've got all the works together, then you're probably better with the switcher on the matching Sony projectors. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.